Hi, it's Farmer Jay, and welcome back to a recap of the top 15 points we learned in our complete beginner's guide to Farming Simulator. This will be a short video, and we'll recap the top 15 points that I think you really need to know. First, remember to start on the easy mode, which is new farmer mode. You can pick any map, but I recommend Elm Creek because it's the easiest. All maps give you the equipment you need to get started on easy mode. If you do any other mode, you have to buy the equipment yourself. And sometimes that's hard to figure out. Number two. Learn the interfaces and what they do. For example, the help menu by pressing F1. The mini map down in the bottom of our left hand screen gives you a good indication of where you are on the map and what's around you. There's the vehicle, well not just the vehicle, but the purchase menu in general by pressing P as well as the main menu, which gives you important information like planting seasons, weather forecasts, crop prices, condition of your vehicles. See, we need to repair some of our vehicles and what we've spent, what animals we have, what contracts there are, and so on. Once you're familiar with the menu, follow the initial tutorial, which will get your first three fields harvested, well, first field harvested, first field planted, and the third field cultivated. Then do contracts. Borrow the items you need, unless you already have them. If you go back in our videos, you'll see how we were able to borrow a sprayer and do multiple contracts using the same piece of equipment to save money. Next up, when it comes time to buy equipment, research that equipment and find out exactly what it does before you buy it. You can find out new equipment by doing contracts. For example, here we have a direct drill that is both fertilizing and seeding, whereas ours only does seeding. But this is way out of our price range. If you hover over an item, as we covered in the videos, it'll tell you what it does. So this seeder, the one that we're using now, can direct seed with no cultivation needed. It also gives you important information like the horsepower and how much seed and fertilizer and so on it contains. Even though the seed is a really good deal right now, we don't have a 210 horsepower tractor. Next up, the next thing we did was we figured out what equipment we were actually using. It turns out we were only using two of our three tractors, so we sold one. With the money, we were able to buy a field and expand our farm. We also needed to plow our fields because they had a plowing state required. So instead of purchasing a plow, this one, we leased it. Because why spend $16,000 for something we were going to use it for an hour when we could only spend $816 and return it when we were done with it? So 
So short-term leases are good. If it's an item you're going to use all the time, every year, or every season, like a fertilizer sprayer, or a new cedar, or the cultivator we purchased, it's worth purchasing those items instead of leasing them. Because every day they're on the farm, they cost you money in leasing fees, and you'll soon find you've spent as much in leasing fees as you had in purchase prices. Once you've harvested your crops, decide what to do, especially with crops like oats, wheat, and barley that leave straw behind. Decide what you're going to do with the tailings. Are you going to sell them or are you going to keep them? We only had one field, and even though we only le we ended up leasing a small forage wagon, it turned out that we did not have enough straw to justify the cost of leasing that forage wagon. The next point, number eight. If you want animals, plan for them. We looked at a chicken pen. We looked at the other animals too, but the chicken pen was the most economical. But we also decided we didn't have enough wheat from our first harvest to feed the chickens throughout the year. So rather than buying them from the store, we decided we would wait a year and grow some more wheat. So we planted two fields of wheat and two fields of barley to prepare for our chickens. Number nine, and like I said, these are in no particular order, is don't add mods till you know more about the game and what the mods do. Some mods can completely change gameplay, and if you're not ready for it, you'll end up being very confused. So wait till you're well established in the game before adding mods. Speaking of don't doing things, don't expand too quickly. We ran a lot of contracts to be able to purchase the fields we had. As I said in the videos, we weren't going to go into corn because that would require buying a, a new cedar as well as a new header. And we just finished two contract or a contract. For 13,000. Next up. The other thing I mean by don't expand too quickly is. Hmm. Cotton sounds fascinating. I'd like to go into cotton. But that's even more expensive. Let's take a look. You need a cedar. And then to harvest the cotton, you need one of these two vehicles, costing anywhere from half a million to 847 thousand dollars. So save up for those. Don't rush into it. Don't try and expand too quickly. If you need to buy something. You can borrow the money instead of leasing it. We looked at the price of borrowing, but don't borrow too much because it can really eat into your profits. So wait till your farm is big enough to accept bigger loans. On the farm we have right now, I'd probably max out my loan at $50,000, depending on the piece of equipment I needed. Plan for the cold months. Especially if, well, really when you're playing with seasons on. We purchased greenhouses. 
or a greenhouse because we couldn't find a spot for a second one. And now we will have something to keep some income coming in during the winter. Next year, we'll have chickens. That'll give us something extra to bring in some extra income. Important, repair your equipment. Believe it or not, especially vehicles like combines, as they build up wear and tear, their performance goes down. If the header gets too worn down, the combine slows down from six miles an hour to almost nothing. And if the combine itself gets too broken down, it actually reduces the yield of the amount of crops it's harvesting. So you lose profits. Fourteen. If you have crop destruction on, or if you're in an odd-shaped field, or a field close to trees that's going to confuse your worker or even yourself remember to do your end rows or your headlands and last but not, not least and this should go without saying is if you find yourself running short on time look at the crop calendar and see what needs to be harvested we're in september now we're about to go into october if we go into october and we if we had a potato field which we don't if we went into october that crop would wither and it would be useless all we could do with it is plow it in so those are my top 15 points or key takeaways for my four videos, if you remember anything, remember those 15 points. And these will work on any platform, whether it's PC or console. So again, I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope you found it useful. Remember to like and subscribe so you're aware of when more content is published because we will start going into more depth into other how-to videos we will look at how to deal with weeds how quickly weeds grow for example we'll look at the different types of equipment used for planting as well as preparing a seed bed and we'll look at animals and various other how-to videos like that so stay tuned stay safe and keep it between the rows